Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio. Today I'm working on the flying geese quilt and I'm gonna quilt the border. And I wanna show you the process that I'm going through to decide what kind of border design that I wanna put in this top. Um, so I'm gonna adjust the camera and so you can see the quilt and I'll show you what I'm looking at. Okay, now what I wanted to do was to do an arc design in this border and um, I needed to know if the width of the block this direction was the same as the width this direction. Um, it's, it's kind of um, an illusion with this quilt. The, these look like these are rectangles but they're actually squares. And I can tell that by just measuring from one end of this block to the other. And I have six inches. And then the block laying on its side from this edge to this edge is also six inches. So these are actually squares, even though they look like they're rectangles. And why they look like rectangles is because the center is flying geese, three flying geese and then it has these little borders on the side that make them a square. So I have a six inch space here and I have three different circle rulers that I'm going to use one of these to do my design. And the reason I want to do this design is because there's really no measuring. Um, if the blocks are the same size all the way around, like whether it's on its side or if it's, you know, vertical, um, I don't have to measure anything because I just find the ruler that will fit in this space and then I've got it made. So this ruler is, um, it has a star cut out in it and a circle on the outside. <clears throat> this ruler is seven inches, so I already know that this one's going to be a little bit big unless I want to put these arcs going way out here and this would work so it's basically just a matter of choosing how far out you want your arc to go and then finding the ruler that will fit now this one I believe is three no it's four this is a four inch circle and of course that is going to be too small and this one should be five yes it's a five inch and this one would also be too small if I want to go from corner to corner of the on the block. And then this one should be a six inch. And this one will work too. So this one will work as well as this one. Um, this one will give me a deeper curve. If I use this one, the curve is going to be a little more shallow. Now if I want to, I can do just the one curve or I could do one curve this way and then come back and cross it this way and I can't remember the name of that design but that is an old quilting design and um, it I think it's a dart and an egg I believe and um, so I could get that kind of design and that it actually will give me like an oval here and then a diamond here so this is the dart and this would be the egg and let me get a see if I've got a piece of chalk where I can draw that for you so you can see what I'm talking about okay I have a couple of marking tools here this is a chalk marker um, it's a little kind of a triangle shape and it's used for dressmaking a lot and then I have a piece of kids chalk and then this is a general's charcoal pencil and I use this for uh, painting when I'm doing drawings on um, a dark colored canvas or something. But you, I also use it for sewing and for quilting. So um, if I wanted to do a dart and egg, let me use this bigger one so I can get corner to corner a little bit better. Um, I don't know if that is showing up. Let me try this. Okay, so if I quilt along the side, I would do the corner, go corner to corner on each block all the way around the quilt in the border here. And then I would come back and then I would just do this side. So what I would need to do is mark
from the edge of the blocks to the edge of the uh, border here. So I would go through and just mark these lines all the way across so that I know where to start my design here. So then we've got this and just come around. And I believe this is probably what I will do. And I don't know if that is showing up very well, but let me zoom in. So there you can see the design that that will make. Here we have, where my chalk go? See if I can make this a little darker. So there we have the dart, the dart is here. These are the darts and these would be the eggs. So it's a dart and egg design. And you will see that not only in quilting, but you'll see it in uh, wood trim in old houses. Uh, a lot of the um, cove moldings and uh, baseboard moldings, and you'll see it sometimes on furniture that will have this kind of a design. So this is the design that I'm going to quilt in, and I always like to do my outer borders first, and no matter how many borders I have, I start at the outside, and then I work my way in towards the edge of the quilt, and then I do my detail quilting within the quilt body itself. So I'm going to go ahead and I just have to decide which one. Either one of these will work. It's just a matter of pulling this one down and knowing that my hopping foot is going to go out just a quarter inch below that design. So um, this one will run me closer to the edge of the quilt. This one will pull it in a little bit more. And I may have to try them both to see what's going to work best. So anyway, I'm going to uh, get the machine ready and I'm gonna start trying this out and uh, I'll show you how I quilt this design in. I'm going to try the larger ruler first to see how this works and I'm placing it so that I will end at the corner of the block and see if this will go in far enough for me. And I think that may be too shallow so I'm going to switch to this one. Yeah and I like that better. It goes up a little bit higher. So I'm just going to well, actually, I could just leave that there. I can um, leave that there the way it is, and it makes kind of a um, swag. So it's just using both both rulers there to do that, and I kind of like that. But then I'd feel like I'd have to do something else in there. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to stitch in the ditch to the next side. To the next, next block, I should say, and just quilt to the edge. I'm going to go on down the side as far as I can and then um, come back up and I'll show you how I take care of this corner. Now I've had a little bit of an accident with my hopping foot. Uh, evidently it came loose up here where this uh, nut is and the pressure I was putting on the foot with the uh, template shove the foot to the left and the needle came right down on top of this ruler and I got a big chip out of here. So now I can no longer use this as 
a circle template. I can still use it for partial circles, but I can't go all the way around now, so I'm going to have to replace this template because this will always give me a little bit of a gap in here or a dip in there, so it's not going to work. So um, it's another thing to watch out on your machines is to make sure that your hopping foot is tightly secure. So it scared me to death that I did not get hurt from it or anything. Okay, now I'm going to go back the other direction and of course these I've already marked there um, but I'm going to go and mark um, the top part of the border, the top border so that I can see where I need to end near the edge of the quilt. And it doesn't have to be exact, but it's it's going to be close. Okay. Then I'm going to start over here and secure my stitches in the uh, seam allowance here. And then we'll go this direction. Okay, now at this point, I am going to get my straight edge and I'm just going to go ahead and sneak over here. And what I want to do is just to kind of do a, a little petal shape, so I'm going to freehand that. And then I'm going to go up. Okay, back here I have a problem because the quilt is um, too close to the um, red snapper. These things that I use to secure my quilt. And there's not enough space to get that ruler in there. So I um, think I'm going to have to freehand this. I don't want to take the risk of hitting that ruler with my needle again. And I could prop that up, but I think that's not going to be to my best interest at this point. So I'm just going to freehand this all the way around. Okay, now it's time to start working on the actual blocks. And I'm going to do a couple of these different designs within the quilt, the ones that um, I showed you in the last video, and um, see how that works out. Uh, since there are so many blocks in here and they're going in every, well they're going, yeah they're going in four different directions. We got some going down, some going up, some going right, some going left. Um, so I think what I'll do is pick out four designs in all of the geese like these they're pointing down towards me I'll do one design in all of those and the ones that are going to the right will get a different design and um, I'll go through from there now I don't want to use anything with rulers um, on this quilt um, I, I just don't want to I'm just don't feel like doing that today so um, I think what I'll do is um, I think I'll use these designs here on this page um, and on the designs that are going towards me I think I'll just start with this design up here this one here and I'll do that in the designs that are going towards me and then I'll just pick one of the other designs and, and go on and I think if I have all the designs use all the designs on one page it'll be 
easier for me to do. So I'm also going to mark these. <laughs> I'm not at a good angle here, I'm afraid. Okay, so I'm gonna use this design for all of the geese blocks that are facing me. I'll use this design for the blocks that are pointing towards the right, this design for the ones that are pointing to the left, and this design for those that are pointing up, which would be away from me. So that'll help keep me organized, I think. And I'll quilt a couple of these and uh, show you how they quilt out. Now this is the one with the herringbone. And to do that one, um, I'm going to start here and work my way around and then I'm going to come down here and then come up and do this. You, there's different ways I could do this and actually I think I will do all of these sides first then go down the middle and then this way and we'll see how that works out. It's been a while since I did this design so um, I can get three or four loops in here. The number doesn't really matter just I'm just going to try and be consistent from in, within the block so from side to side and within each one of these background triangles so let's see how this works and I'm just going to be doing three looks like one two three one two and I am in stitch re regulated mode and then I'm going to come down to the center and then I'm going to start doing the herringbone. Stitch in the ditch to the other side and do three more loops. And then three more loops. Okay, the next thing I need to decide is whether I want to stitch in the ditch along the uh, borders that are around these blocks and I think that I will and I think that'll just help finish it off so and I'll go ahead and use my little ruler There is that block and I'm going to go ahead and come around to the block that's right below it. Let me try to get the camera or the machine out of the way so you can see this block a little better. And this one is pointing to the left so I'm going to do the heart design in that one. Okay, so now this one is the heart design one and so I'm just going to jump in there and start quilting it. Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, edge here. Because I kind of need to start at this part of a triangle instead of here. So we're going to do the heart. And there's that one. And I think I'll go ahead and just do this one. And then we'll come in and do this one.
and I'll do the dish side on this one. Okay, now I'm going to do this plaid block right here. And this one is pointing towards my right. And this is the one that's just the loops on the outside. And then I'm going to do a petal shape there. So I need to, I'm going to go ahead and stitch in the ditch and get down to the bottom. And I'm just going to do a loop. And then in here, I'm going to do this petal design. And I'm going to go around and then get the ditch over here. Okay, this one is pointing away from me. So this is this one here that has the intersecting uh, arcs to make what kind of looks like a trinity sign. So we'll see how that goes. And let me start down here. Get some of that fuzz off my needle. This design um, I had not done in a while. It took me a little bit to remember how to do it. It's, it's not difficult. It's just a different motion. You do an arc and then you do another arc but go beyond that one and, you know, go across is what I'm trying to say. Go back down. I'm just gonna fall all the way down on this side. So there is a sample of each one of those designs. And I will bring the camera closer so that you can see those. Here's the one with the herringbone. You can see that a little closer. Just the, the loops on the side, I just put three in. Um, the design I drew out had four, I just quilted in three. And then we do the, the herringbone within the center. So there's that one. And this is the one that was pointing to the left. And I did the hearts in this one. And you can see they're very much freehand and they are not um, completely symmetrical. There's, um, hearts are can be a challenge, uh, at least for me. Uh, they're hard to see in this fabric here. This is a very busy fabric and they're a little, little harder to see, but they're in there. There's another one with the herringbone in it, because that was, again, that one's pointing towards me, just like that one. And then here is one that's pointing to the right, and I just did a big loop in the uh, background triangles, and then we did this petal shape in the um, big triangles 
and then this is the one that was pointing away from me and this is the one where I did the loops that overlap each other or the arcs that overlap each other um, these two I did not quite get correct uh, they need to look more like this with a loop on all three corners and those I just kind of went to the point so I'm going to have to pull those out and redo those and uh, like I said, this is a design I haven't done very much. It's, it's been it's been a while since I've done it, so I need to practice that a little bit more and get the hang of it. So there is that design. So those are the four designs I'm going to do in this quilt, and um, I think it'll look okay. Um, I think it's pretty good. And then here are the um, egg and dart designs in the border, and of course this is another busy fabric, and it's hard to see that but um, here is one of the darts and then here's the egg shape which is the oval as you can see I have the flying geese quilt up on the design wall now it's all quilted I just need to put the binding and the label on it but I wanted to give you some close-up views of this quilt I hope you can see the texture that the quilting put into this quilt um, each block is um, made up of three flying geese and they are arranged in different directions so we've got some that are going north some are south some are east some are west so what I had done was came up with or chose for the designs that I had showed you in a previous video and used those and just assigned a direction for each one of them so uh, up in this corner up here up there in that upper left hand corner all of the uh, flying geese that are heading north have that little flower type design in the center and then the loops on the edge so uh, every every block that is pointing that direction has the same design in it and they are all pretty even as far as the density of the quilting so that wasn't a problem and um, some were a little bit faster than others but none of them took very long so it was a fairly quick project I think I got this whole top quilted in about three hours and uh, the binding will probably take me longer than the quilting did so I think it turned out pretty well and I'm liking the texture that I'm seeing and um, give you a little closer view of some of the quilting in it But you see in that yellow block right here, it has the loops on the outer triangles and the herringbone in the center. This is one with the hearts. And uh, this one has the Trinity sign. More hearts in that one. And here's one with the loops and the petals. So we've got a variety of designs in there, but they are kind of cohesive just because each block that runs, the design is the same in every block that runs that same direction. So that kind of gives it some unity and some cohesiveness. And um, I think it just helps with the look of the quilt overall. And I think this is a pretty good sampling of fabrics from 1980s and 1990s. So. Um, I think that's actually fairly interesting in itself and the overall pattern gives it kind of a woven look with those um, sashings on the outside edges of the blocks and even though these blocks are square they're six inches square they appear to be rectangular shaped because of the way the sashing is put on the blocks so um, I think it's rather interesting and I am glad I put that outer border on it's uh, the right era of fabric that's uh, from the 1990s and um, it's about the same depth of green the same shade of green it's kind of a bluish tinted green and um, I think it goes real good with this quilt so here we are we're all done and now I can move on to the next project just have to decide what that is I want to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share the video with some of your quilting friends. Thanks for watching. 
Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my newest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.